How to create a pattern stamp brush in Affinity Photo, PC or Mac. Go to the File menu and New. I want to create a new document, so 4000 and 4000. You can, of course, create larger than that if you wish. 72 and also Transparent Background. Set that on and click Create. Go to the Tools panel and select the Ellipse tool or any of the other shapes. So I'm just going to go now, set the colour. I've got fill here of white, but I'm going to set it to red. And apply. Hold down the shift to create a circle design. Now go to a layer and down to rasterize. You need it as a pixel layer. No use as an ellipse. So rasterize. And now you can go and create a pattern. So layer and new pattern layer from selection. And then you get your pattern design and you can resize it. So just resize it using that bounding box. And I'm going to put it about there. You can, of course, vary it up to you. You can also go here to this layer and this is in the layers panel and just delete it just down the bottom. And now you've got your pattern design. The pattern layer that's currently selected needs to be converted to a pixel layer. So go to a layer and down to a rasterize. And you can see now it's a pixel layer. You can now use it with the clone brush. With the layer selected, go over here to the clone brush tool. You can find that in the tools panel. Select that. Now, add global source is not available for some weird reason. However, sources panel, you can find that in the view menu, studio and sources. And you can go down here and there's a little button there. Click that. And that's added as a source, a global source. You can now go back to the original image. Go to the tools panel and select the clone brush tool. With that selected, you go up here and you've got options here for current layer, current layer below, but global. That's what you need, global. You can select this. However, if you try and use it, just use it, it will come up and say you need to double click this. You need to double click it. So just go over here to the sources. And now you're in the actual design there, that source. And you can position, you can see the cursor's changed. So the cursor changed and just position it there. Now you can see there is a limitation with this approach because of course it doesn't stretch off to eternity. So you just click there and that gives you a center for your brush. I'm using an art pad and pen. You don't have to, you can use a mouse. You can select different brushes as well. You don't have to go with just a standard brush. Just go to the brushes panel and select a brush. This one in textures, perfectly reasonable. You can then apply it with all of the settings. You've got loads of settings. You've got width, opacity, all those standard things for brushes. Please check out my brush videos. So let's just apply it. Now, at the moment, it's not aligned. If you apply it again, if you see if I apply it again, it will apply at that point. So it's not going to be consistent all the way across. If I apply it again, you can see the pattern then gets sort of messed up, sort of applying it at that point. But each time it will change it. If you want it to be perfect each time, go to aligned and you can just apply it like that. And each time you go to it, you can see it will be in exactly the same position and you can apply the, the texture that way. However, there is a limitation. And the limitation is the size of the pattern document. It's not such a big deal when it's 4,000 by 4,000, but you will go over the edge and you will see at some point it will suddenly, there's nothing there, look, you've got an edge. And that's the reason I go for the not aligned. So I'm just gonna deselect that. And you can see, now apply it. So I've got all these settings, like I've got global there, which is using the actual clone that I created. Also you've got blending modes, so you can go here, with blending modes, make certain the document you create has got transparency. If you've got document with a background, doesn't always make it as easy to apply. So darken, you can apply it there and you can see then you get that result. And you can create a variety of different designs simply by, again, apply it there. Maybe go for multiply. Now, you can also change other things, of course. Flow, opacity, maybe you want to reduce that. Maybe a smaller brush. 
And you can always change the brush as well. You don't have to go with just that one. Maybe select that one instead and apply that. And you can see then you've got that and you can still see you've got that clone there. That same effect just being applied. And you can do this over the entire document. You've also got additional options here of scale. You can always turn around and say, well, I want slightly smaller design. So set it to 23, say, and then apply. Now you can see one issue with this is because of the, obviously the clone source document, it's just always gonna create a bit of a line where it obviously just cuts off. That's, it's not infinite. And you can apply the brush stroke like that and you can see it's always gonna be a slight, but it's a stamp. You've got that design, but you can see the limitation there for that. Always gonna create that when you go for scale. Still, it's still effective for quite a lot of different designs and you can see you apply it like that. But there will always be a point where because you've scaled it, made it smaller, that you're gonna get that sort of cutoff point. Not great, I know, but that's the way. Without actually having a proper pattern stamp tool, obviously that would work much better, but this is a workaround, so that's what you can do. And also you can do rotation. So let's just go for rotation, maybe make it 52 or 50, 49, and you can rotate it. You can see it's slightly different rotation. So you've got all these different settings. You've got scale, you've also got flip as well. You can flip both. Again, the result may or may not be what you want. And you can always reduce it down again and apply like that. So in different parts, and again, change the blending mode, go for divide and apply it like that. And you can see the result there. And of course you can apply it locally and you can vary the brush. Go and select a different brush, apply it again and so on and so on. Increase the size and much, much more. What if you want to add some effects to this? Well, you can always go to layer and new layer. So now you've got a pixel layer here. It's on top of the existing one. And then you can just apply your brush stroke. And I'm just going to apply it very quickly like that. So I've got a little bit of a design there. Now, with that design, I can move it. I can reposition it. It's just a layer, so if you want to, you can reposition it. You can also hold down the alter option key and just drag to create a duplicate, create another. But you can also, with that layer there, just go down here, effects, FX. Click there, and now you've got options here for outer shadow, 3D, and I'm just going to go with 3D. So click and highlight, highlight that, and then change the radius. And you can see as you do that, you end up with this three dimensional effect added to your pattern design. And I could add others, of course, but I'm going with close. And again, it's just a layer. You can hold down the alter option key again and drag that and duplicate that design and create all kinds of different designs with that. And rotate and much, much more. If you decide you want to change the color, unfortunately there's no color feature to change that brush stroke. What you can do is you can go to the clone source again, and then you can, obviously with that selected, you can go to layer and new adjustment layer and down to recolor. And you can then modify the hue, saturation, lightness, etc. You just move those back and forth. Say I like that, I think that's great. Merge, just click merge. And now you can see you've got that pixel layer there. However, it is still not a source. You need to save it as a source. So you can see the source panel here. What you need to do is go down again to this, because this unfortunately is not available. So you can click here and straight away, you've got your clone source which you can now use in the other image. With the pixel layer selected, you can also apply filters. Just go to filters and say distort and deform. And just deform it, just add some handles. There's the deform panel. And you can then distort this design, just warp it slightly like that. Warp it in all kinds of ways. Please check out my videos on how to warp designs and then click apply. And again, you can do exactly the same. Just go down here and you can add this as a global source as well. So click and you can see you've got that distortion. 
Then just go back to the original image. Make certain you've got the clone brush tool selected. Then go to sources and then select the untitled one here. Now you need to double click this untitled and then you're into the actual design again and you can see you've got a cursor change. Again, click there in the center and now you've got your blue pattern design and you can see, you can see the blue and the there and you can just apply it. Again, you go back there and you can go for red. As long as it's got this little dot, that's all it needs. It needs that dot to work with. It needs to know where the source is, where it starts. And you can then apply again and again your pattern design. Now you go to this one. This one doesn't have that little dot. So if you click there, you need again to double click and you go to this and then set the center. And now you've got your center and you can see it there. You can see that center, They've all got that center point and that now means it can be used. And you can put, maybe not over there, maybe at different positions. Again, you can change the scale. Let's just reduce the scale there, make it like 135 and apply it again. And you can see then the result of that. All kinds of different designs can be added using this approach. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Thank you very much.